Good morning, jump starters. Happy Monday. Man, already. Monday, already. Wow, this is fast. Praise God. I'm gonna get situated here and we're getting ready to take off and jump start the word. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Brother Tom. Praise God. Hey, honey. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Man, beautiful day. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to get situated here and we'll get ready to get started. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Shonda. Good morning, Sue. Praise the Lord. Amen. Again, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We finished last week. Of course, we never finished because the word is just so pregnant. The word is just so, you can never exhaust the revelation out of any scripture. We could stay on one scripture and it just expands and expands. The Holy Spirit is such a brilliant, <laughs> what a mind he has. But we uh, finished up Friday talking about the exceeding greatness of his power, you know, in us who believe. And uh, so, yeah, it is a God morning. That's right. Amen. Uh, but, and we're going to, we're going to leave that for a while and we're going to talk about, uh, the, the knowledge of him in the knowledge of him. We're going to maybe take today or tomorrow and tomorrow and kind of zero in on that, focus in on that. We're still working out of that Ephesians one prayer where the apostle Paul, Ephesians one, 16 through the end of the chapter one of the most powerful prayers in the Bible. I really believe it is one of the most powerful prayers in the Bible. And uh, yet it is almost unheard of. Uh, it's uh, phenomenal to me when the Lord revealed that to me. You know, that uh, we have a lot of people praying the Lord's Prayer, which really is not a prayer designed for the church. That was designed for the apostles in that in-between period between the Old and New Covenant that was uh, something Jesus prayed before his death, burial, and resurrection. There was no way he could reveal new covenant truth to them. They weren't able to handle it. And I'm not putting down the Lord's Prayer. I'm just saying that the Lord's Prayer is not really uh, a fully new covenant prayer. Jesus prayed that while the old covenant was still in operation. And uh, a lot of things that he prayed for in the Lord's Prayer has already been accomplished. And yet here's the Ephesians 1, the Ephesians 3, the Philippians 1 prayer, the Colossians 1 prayer, the Colossians 4 prayer, the Ephesians 6 prayer. <laughs> and uh, they're never mentioned. And I know Satan's behind that. He does not want us praying New Covenant prayers, New Style, New Testament prayers. So, uh, and you know, I'm blessed because even though we've been on this Ephesians 1 prayer now for almost over a month, most of you, I've noticed most of you haven't given up. You haven't just said, well, that's too repetitive because it's not too repetitive. It's just not. And uh, it's so cool. The Jumpstart Nation is really getting after it. So this is a season that the Holy Spirit is unveiling the depth and the power and the importance of praying the prayers that he put in there. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3. Uh, Ephesians 6, praying for, for utterance and boldness, and Colossians 4, and Colossians 1, man. You know, for example, let me just show you something. So here's Ephesians, the Ephesians 1 prayer. Paul says, uh, he said, I cease not to give thanks for you. So I, I, you know what? I thank you. I give God thanks for you, the, you believers here on the jump start and for the believers at Victory Christian Center and for the fellow ministers in my life, those believers, thank God. You know what? I'm, I'm, find, <laughs> uh, I'm finding that believing is a rare thing. <laughs> you know, real believing. Now, I didn't say church going. I'm talking about real believing, real discipleship, real, real discipleship, you know? And um, amen. Good morning, Paige. And so... I think a lot of the mess that we're seeing in our nation is an absence of real Christianity. That's just my view, okay? I don't think we've been the salt. I think we have been concerned about building big buildings and having big programs and not against any of that. But where are the real believers? Where are the ones that um, when persecution hits, 
that we don't just start apologizing all over ourselves. Why would I apologize for things that is in the word? Why do I apologize for things that are true? I don't think you have to be mean and ugly. But if you believe the Bible, you'll be accused of being mean and ugly. You're going to be accused. Satan is an accuser. And he's going to use people to accuse. And we don't need to be backing down. Wow, I'm not trying to go here. But it seems like the Holy Spirit's leading me right now. And I'm, I'm not wanting that wasn't. Okay, so anyway. Then no wonder. Good morning, Shelly. No wonder. And you know, we need to be praying. You, you just forget Facebook. Forget it. It, it's there, okay? Uh, I mean, what are you going to... Anyway, so pray. I mean, so Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. The Apostle Paul, who wrote this letter to the Ephesian church from a prison cell because he preached the truth. He preached the gospel. And he was writing it from a prison cell. And here is what this preacher, Paul, the preacher... The apostle said in Ephesians 6, 19, he said, Pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. I, I, need, I need to be able to speak this thing with the help of God. Pray for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. Hold. Stop the bus. Paul? You're already in prison for preaching the gospel. And you're asking for more boldness? Are you kidding me? You know, Paul didn't write a letter to, the, to, to, to Caesar or Nero or whoever was in office at that time. He didn't write a letter to the head of the prison. Oh, I'm sorry. He says, I'll try to be more politically correct. Uh, no, no. He said, pray that I, man, man, wow. Pray, shoo, that's hitting me hard. Wow, Holy Spirit. Pray that I may have utterance, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. He said, for which I am an ambassador in bonds. I'm in prison, I'm in, I'm in chains. That therein, in those chains that therein, in those chains, in that dungeon, in that prison, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So we're going to pray that right now. See, see what I'm saying? That's the Ephesian prayers. See how powerful it is? We've got to pray for boldness. Listen, if you guys don't pray for me to have boldness, I won't have it. Because if Paul needed it, and he's the apostle that wrote nearly half the New Testament. And he's saying, I need more boldness. Now, he had so much boldness, he got thrown into prison, yet he's asking for boldness. That's crazy. So right now, I'm telling you right now, pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, prophets, you and me, whether we are in the fivefold or not, we need to have boldness to make known the mystery of the gospel. So why don't we just start our week praying for that? Is that okay with you? Pray this out loud. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that utterance may be given unto me, unto the apostles and prophets, to the evangelists, and to the pastors and the teachers that they may open their mouth boldly that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel that I may speak boldly that they may speak boldly as they ought to speak. <laughs> hey, we just prayed the word. We just prayed God's word back to him. Man, is that, I'm, is that exciting? Glory to God. Boldness. Not boldness to argue your political viewpoint. And there's a time and place for that, okay? 
Not boldness to, to, to slander people. Satan is a slanderer, but boldness to do what? Boldness to make known, make known the mystery of the gospel. Now, he prayed, we're, we're just going to start our week off praying this way. That's how the Holy Ghost is leading, so we're going to go with it. But Colossians chapter 4, again, Paul says, he said, pray for us, us preachers, that God would open unto us a door of utterance, a door of utterance, to, to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. He was, he was in prison <laughs> there too. And he's praying for an open door while he was in prison. He wants an open door to speak the word. Wow, praise God. And then he said that I may make it manifest, the mystery of Christ, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. All right, let's jumpstart this. Father, I pray for all of us. I pray for the preachers and the teachers. My pastor. The teachers and preachers on TV. And social media. The fivefold ministers. And for me. Father, that you would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ that we may make it manifest as we ought to speak. Thank you, Father. Wow, so we've, we've, we've prayed two things today. We've already jump-started two things right off the bat by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Man, we prayed for Ephesians 6, utterance. We prayed for Colossians 4, that uh, a door of utterance may be opened that we may make it the mystery of Christ manifest. The mystery of Christ that we make, may make it manifest as we ought to speak. Say that out loud, manifested. Amen. We want to manifest the mystery of Christ. Now, what is this what is this mystery of the gospel? What is this mystery of Christ? All right? What is that? Because he's he's in Ephesians 6, he says I need to speak boldly to make known the mystery, the mystery of the gospel. Here he says that I may make the mystery of Christ manifested. What is that? So look at Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Because it is so profound and so powerful, we have to pray for utterance. We have to pray for boldness to even manifest it. That's how awesome this mystery is. Amen. And I'll tell you right now, Satan doesn't want it manifested. That's why we have to pray for boldness. Because the kingdom of darkness, as defeated as it is, does not want this mystery manifested. He does not want it made known. All right, so here Paul alludes to this mystery in Romans 16, 25 through 27. He said, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. He said, he said uh, but, is, but now is made manifest. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Without the revelation and manifestation of this mystery that was kept secret since the world began, without the manifestation of this mystery, the nations cannot be obedient to the faith. Because if you're not preaching it, how are they going to believe it? And if you don't see it, if we don't see it as preachers, how are we going to preach it? And if we don't preach it, how will anybody believe it? See what I mean? But we've got to know what this is. What is this secret, this mystery? Okay. 
He said, uh, verse 25, again, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Establish you according to the preaching of Jesus Christ. Believers will not be established without the preaching of the word. Preaching and teaching will not go out of style, even though people are saying it's out of style. Gathering to hear the word of God preached is not out of style, all right? And uh, you probably have people that, since the COVID-19, have not been to church, and they're getting into the real habit of not being in church, and they're being robbed, right? But we, we must be exposed to the teaching and preaching of the fivefold ministry, the fivefold ministry of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher is not out of style in God's kingdom. It is not. It's a central part of his plan. And it's the preaching of Jesus Christ. Not politics. Not politics. It's the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the foundation of the world. Praise God. Let's say this out loud. God has the power to establish us according to Paul's gospel. God is establishing us, establishing me, making me firm and strong through the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Glory be to God. See, the revelation of the mystery being released through the, through the preaching is what establishes a believer, makes them firm, makes them solid, makes them strong, makes them immovable. They won't apologize when they get attacked on social media. They're going to stand their ground for the gospel. Amen. So this revelation of the mystery, what is this revelation of the mystery? Again, Paul mentions it again in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9, verse 8. Hallelujah. He says this, he said, um, wherein God has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. God has abounded abounded. That's a big word. That means overflow. That means flooded us and is flooding us. God has abounded toward us in all wisdom and insight. Woo! There's a flow of wisdom and prudence and insight flowing to us. Glory to God. What a wealth of revelation. Say this out loud. God has abounded toward us in all wisdom and insight. Let me see this. I'm going to look this up in the Amplified. Praise God. We're unveiling this mystery. Ephesians chapter 1. Thank God for this mystery. All right. Uh, Ephesians 1, uh, let's see, verse 8, which God has lavished upon us in every kind of wisdom and understanding. Glory to God, he's abounded toward us. He's just wanting us to, to see it. And he says this is, is practical insight and prudence. Then notice verse 9, having made known unto us, us believers, the mystery of his will. The mystery of his will. Okay, so it's called in Ephesians 6, the mystery of the gospel. In Colossians 4, the mystery of Christ. And here he says it's the mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure. All right? According to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. Wow. Wow. Praise God. Say this out loud. God has made known to me the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself. Let's say that again because as you confess it, your heart will start to grab it. As you confess it, your heart will reach out and start grabbing. Say it out loud. 
God has made known to me the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure. Now, the word will is the Greek word thelo. It can mean pleasure. It can mean desire. So I want you to hear this. God has made known unto us the mystery of his desire, the mystery of his pleasure. Wow, it was a mystery. We're going to find out what that is in a second, this pleasure, the mystery of his will. It's made known. We know the will of God. Say this out loud. I know the will of God. He has made known unto me the mystery of his will. Wow, wow. And so what is his desire? What is this mystery he's made known to us? What is this pleasure, this, this, this delight that he's made known to us, this pleasure that he purposed in himself? Verse 10 is the beginning of it. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one, in Christ, all things in Christ. We've been unified, unified in Christ, all right? All things in Christ, listen, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Things in heaven and things on earth that are in Christ are now unified. We live on earth as if we're living in heaven. Heaven and earth in Christ have been joined together. Jesus prayed it in the Lord's Prayer. Thy will, pleasure, fellow, thy will, thy desire be done, thy will, thy desire be done on earth as it is in heaven. And in Christ, that will of heavenly realities now joined on earth. We're now living in a heavenly reality. God's will, the mystery of his will has now come to pass. That's what he purposed in himself, that we could walk on earth with heaven's blessing. Praise God. Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every... <laughs> Woo. Wow. With every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And where are those heavenly places? In Christ Jesus, Ephesians 1, 3. We have access to heaven's blessings because we're living in heavenly places in Christ. Heaven and earth have come together in Christ. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. And so that's the mystery of his will. Hallelujah. Thank you. And then he goes on in verse 11, and he says, In whom? In Christ also. We have obtained an inheritance. We have, not going to, not when we get to heaven. We have, we have it. We have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Say this out loud, in Christ, glory to God. I have obtained an inheritance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have been predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own desire. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, that mystery is about heaven's blessing now on earth. That mystery is that heaven and earth are joined together. Praise the Lord, amen. We're now able to enjoy heaven's authority, heaven's health, heaven's wealth, heaven's wisdom, heaven's presence. Man, 
You know, I just recently heard a song that we used to sing 10, 15 years ago, and I, I thought it was awesome, but no. And, and, it's, and it's a beautiful song, but it's, it says, I just want to be, I just want to be where you are. Wait a minute, what do you mean you want to be where he is? You've been raised up together. You have been quickened together. You have been seated together with him in heavenly places. You are where he is. Praise God, you are where he is. He's where you are. Thank you, Jesus. So heaven and earth has been joined together. We're enjoying heaven on earth, heaven's blessings on earth. Amen. And we, when we speak things on the earth, it's as if heaven said it. So it's earth on heaven. It's earth in heaven. When we say in Jesus' name, I decree this, I declare this, it's as if heaven said it. Because while we're on earth, we're also seated at the right hand of God. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10, this is the dispensation of the fullness of times. This is the era of the fullness of times. And he has gathered together, he has gathered together in one all things in Christ. We're now there in Christ, amen? Both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Heavens and earth have come together in Christ. We have access, glory, man, man, man. So this mystery Again, look at it, Ephesians chapter, or, uh, yeah, Ephesians 3, and we're going to be done here. Oh, my goodness, it's, it's 27 after. Wow. Y'all getting this? Do y'all get this? We're, man, we're living on earth as if we're in heaven. Heaven has come, and we're enjoying heaven's blessings, but when we speak the word, it's as if we're saying it from the right hand of God. All things have been joined in, in Christ, both things in heaven and earth. Man, that's awesome. Praise God. I know... I. I don't have the words to make it clear. I, I'm, I'm trying to make it clear. So I'm praying for you to have revelation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. In other words, <laughs> what Jesus prayed happened. Thy will, this is the Lord's prayer. <laughs> Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You don't have to keep praying that. Now we need to acknowledge that his will has come to pass and all things in heaven and earth have been joined together. Jesus' prayer was answered. You know, he said, deliver us from evil. I pray that thou, you know, deliver us from evil. Colossians 1.13 says, he has delivered you from the power of darkness. You have been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom. That prayer God answered. He delivered us. Jesus prayed it and he delivered us. But if we keep on praying the Lord's Prayer, we keep on going back into the old covenant and praying for things that's already happened, hoping that they'll happen, but you don't know when they happen because you don't know what it looks like because it already happened, right? And so we, Satan's got us praying the Lord's Prayer so we don't get into the new covenant revelation. Does that make sense? Praise God. Praise God. Give us this day our daily bread. Did you hear that? Paul said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Notice that that prayer got answered. Our daily bread, that prayer got answered. Jesus, the prayer got answered. What about uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive those? who've trespassed against us. Forgive us our debts as we forgive us our sins. Notice Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have forgiveness of sins. We have it now. We have the forgiveness of sins. Glory to God. Say this out loud. Hallelujah. Say, my God is supplying all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Say this out loud. In him, I have forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. According to the riches of his grace. Let's, call, let's finish up. Call, you know, I'm, I'm bouncing back between the Lord's Prayer and the epistles. Let's pray this. 
just out of honoring the fact that the Lord's prayer was answered, say Colossians 1.13, say this, God has delivered me from the authority of darkness. He has delivered me from the wicked one <laughs> and has translated me into the kingdom of his dear son. Praise God. Ephesians 3.12, it said, uh, In him we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Say this out loud. In Jesus, I have boldness and I have access with confidence by the faithfulness of Jesus. Access. So I want to be where you are. We should be saying we have complete access, total access. Hallelujah. God's presence. I have access to his presence. It's in me. He has access to me. Praise God. All the, the mystery of his will. We didn't even get through that. The mystery of his will. This was Mystery Monday. Amen. Glory to God. You are living on earth as if you're living in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man, make sure you're decreeing, declaring the word. If you get on social media, don't get into agreement with the devil. No, sir. No, ma'am. Let's get into agreement with the word of God. I love you guys. Please share this. All right, see you tomorrow at nine. Hard telling, I was gonna go the other direction and we went this way, so that's all right. Love you, y'all have a blessed day.